This is Zlatan acting in a real action movie. Aha! I bet you thought the thumbnail was fake. I kind of wish it was. There's actually movies out there that footballers have genuine acting roles in. And I've never seen any of them before. Until now. I converted my bedroom into a film set so we can rank all four movies that massive, like generational footballers have had acting roles in. And I'm not allowed to leave until we find out once and for all which footballer is the best actor. I've made a trophy for that. We're awarding it at the end. Which footballer is the worst actor? I've also made a trophy for that. You probably don't want to win it though. And is every footballer a terrible actor or are any of them secretly good? We've got a movie marathon to complete, so let's begin with it. Escape to Victory. It came out in 1981. I've never watched it and there's a lot riding on this. When I told my dad I was watching this movie, he told me that it was one of his favorite movies of all time. So if I don't like this... Honestly, I think he's gonna disown me. The movie's set during World War II, and it's about these prisoners of war being invited to play a game of football against the German national team. And this film stars three huge names. Sylvester Stallone plays a prisoner of war who can't play football because obviously he's, you know, American. <laughs> Michael Caine plays a British prisoner of war who can play football. Don't play the bloody American game, get up! And 27 minutes in, we meet our third main character, who's played by none other than Pele. Kelly's character in this is called Lewis, who is another prisoner of war. Lewis's personality consists of that he's really good at football and he doesn't talk all that much. So he's literally the opposite of me. Most of his scenes are just him being miles better than all the other prisoners at football. Dang, this Lewis guy's amazing. I think he should go pro. But Pele also gets some scenes where he actually speaks. Which aren't as good. How'd you like to play football against the Germans? Why not? I don't think he's actually that bad. It's just the Hollywood royalty in this movie is what makes him look way worse. What the hell's the matter with you guys? You wanna go back to prison? Please, Hat. That game means a lot to us. But even so, this movie goes so hard. There's a twist that the game between the prisoners of war and the Germans is rigged for the Germans to win. And pretty much the rest of the cast are just footballers as well. Wait, is that Bobby Moore? It is! It is Bobby Moore! Towards the end of the movie, the prisoners end up playing the game against the Germans, even though they know it's rigged for them to lose. Pele dribbles right through the Germans like a hot knife through butter until he gets absolutely clattered by one of the opponents and goes off injured. The end. Except he doesn't. Pele comes back on with one arm, scores a bicycle kick to tie the game, and everyone goes crazy including myself. Oh my god, Pele is cooking right now. Like, to score a bicycle kick against the Germans during World War II? This is why Pele is the greatest of all time. Anyway, spoiler warning for, like, the three of you that care. The prisoners of war draw the game, so the Germans don't win. There's a massive pitch invasion. All the fans help disguise the prisoners of war just like regular fans. They run out the stadium, burst through the gates of freedom, and they escape. Oh! Good movie! Dad, you do not have to disown me. I love this. I'm giving it four stars. And as for Pele, in all seriousness, he does do a pretty amazing job considering how much of the movie he's in. Not only acting, but also representing the sport. So the legend himself gets an 8 out of 10 from me. A front runner for best actor. He's gonna be tough to beat. We're jumping forward 36 years to a movie released in 2017 called King Arthur Legend of the Sword. I've never watched it, but judging by the reviews, I'm probably gonna wish I never did. After about 10 minutes, I realized that this movie was literally just bar for bar the same as The Lion King. <laughs> Let's see, we have. A noble king is brutally killed by his younger brother who is envious of his older brother having the throne and wants it for himself. He also conspires to kill the king's son to ensure that the entire bloodline is eliminated, but the son luckily manages to escape. The younger brother then unrightfully claims the throne, even though the rightful king, the son, is still out there somewhere, growing older on a journey of humble self-discovery. Only here, that humble journey involves killing a thousand foot tall elephants and magical elves. This movie is insanity. The only thing that's worse is the actual footballers acting in this. 30 minutes in, we have a scene where there's a sword in a stone. Whoa. Now I, for one, was not expecting this to be in the movie. And it's here we meet none other than David Beckham. Well, it's actually not Beckham. His character's called Trigger, according to Wikipedia. Trigger, in this movie, he's basically just one of the king's squires who's ringleading the whole sword in the stone thing. And his entire personality is made up of the fact 
He's really mean. Hands on the ilk, stupid. He just bullies Arthur for no reason. Not that there's a reason. Anyway, we all know how this goes. King Arthur goes up to the sword in the stone. Trigger's like, oh, you'll never be able to do that, mate. Back on the barge. Arthur whips it out. I'm sorry, I just wanted to say that. Anyway, Trigger can't believe what he's just seen, and that is the last time we see him. And the one scene he gets, Beckham kind of sticks. I know he's not an actor, but, you know, at least give him something interesting to do here. Like, Pele got to do a bicycle kick. Beckham here is just standing on a rock throwing insults at people. Stupid. So, unfortunately, Beckham's acting gets a 4 out of 10. He's well on his way to maybe win the worst actor award. But don't worry, guys. This movie doesn't have an absurd ending. It's not like a 50-foot snake shows up. King Arthur gains literal kaiju powers and fights a demon. At this point, King Arthur's sword could turn into a lightsaber. And honestly, I wouldn't even blink twice. And spoiler warning, for literally no one, Arthur overthrows the current king and claims his rightful spot on the throne. I bet you haven't seen that one before. Simply put, this movie just lacks the sword. Two stars. Please let the next film be better than this. Movie three is called Asterix and Obelix, The Middle Kingdom, starring, you guessed it, Zlatan. By the looks of things, they've given Obelix the biggest Rear end? I think I've ever seen in my life. There's just no way I don't get distracted by this. It takes Zlatan a full hour to even show up in this movie. He plays a Roman character called Antivirus, who in the movie is like Julius Caesar's champion or whatever. He He's a bad guy. Credit where it's due. He's actually really badass in this. Rainbow flicking his helmet, whacking a guy with it. This is cinema. But then he has to speak. And that isn't as badass. No, retournez à vos causes de charge. Yes, this movie's in French, and I know he's not an actor, but I still feel like this is the most emotionless I've ever seen Zlatan. Vos causes de charge. But in his defense, whenever he's not on screen, the movie is infinitely worse. First of all, our main hero goes around doing this. What? Like, he's just being plunged into outer space. There, there's no way... He's surviving that, and everyone's just like, yeah, whatever. And the sound effects are also ridiculous. Like, listen to this that was actually used in the movie. <laughs> and during goofy scenes like this, characters will just randomly break into tears to deliver some emotional speech. Like, what are we watching here? One of my YouTube videos? But whenever Obelix and his absolute dump truck was on screen, I was only thinking one thing. Yeah! And while I was waiting for Zlatan to show up again, it hit me. This is the most unemployed thing I think I've ever done. Like, can everyone just comment Jamie is jobless, please? I, I deserve it. In the final battle, Antivirus appears again. This time, he's face to face with our four main heroes. He begins charging aggressively on the attack. Oh, hope is lost for our heroes. Oh no, he's about to annihilate them. Oh, he's pulled his hamstring halfway through. And he's injured. And he's asking Caesar to be subbed off. And he's gone. And that is the last we see of him. Whenever Zlatan's not talking, I think he's the best part of the movie. Well, second best. So I'm going to give Asterix and Obelix the Middle Kingdom two and a half stars. It made me laugh. But I think even ChatGPT has more enthusiastic line delivery. So I'm going to give Zlatan a five out of ten. He's fine. He's not winning any awards, though. <laughs> I have never in my life been more intrigued by a movie than the one we are about to see. Not because of its concept, it looks just kind of like your standard action movie, but because it stars Eric Cantona. Aside from being one of Man United's best ever players, the only thing I know Cantona for is being a, a strange man. I love football. So the fact that he's not only in the movie, but also starring as its main villain, I 100% conclusively I have no idea what to expect. As soon as Cantona came into the movie, I realized this was going to be different. In all the other movies, the footballers play kind of a meme character. They aren't meant to be taken that seriously. Here, Cantona is trying to play a 100% dramatic role. And he low-key nails it. This movie is in French, but even so, I can tell he's putting his absolute butt crack into this role. And there are many scenes where he's the best actor in the room. Now, I've done some investigation, and Cantona, it turns out, has been in a lot of movies. 
after he retired, he did decide to pursue a career in acting. I didn't know he became this good. Anyway, in the movie, his character Victor is the head of a crime syndicate that our hero, Adam, who's a cop, has to go undercover into and topple it from the inside. This movie slaps, by the way. There are a lot of action scenes that actually had me, like this one taking place on CCTV cameras. That's cool as hell. I like that. And because Cancelar's playing the main villain, he's pretty much in every scene. My brain, I, I can't believe what I'm watching right now. Why is Cancelar actually good? I think the biggest praise I can give him is that about halfway through, I just stopped thinking about the fact I was watching Cancelar and just took Victor's character at face value. Anyway, spoiler warning. I don't think this is really much of a surprise, but the cops end up winning. Victor gets eliminated. The bad guys lose. Good guys win. Everyone's happy. What a banger. Now, I'm also going to rate this movie four stars, but if I had to choose between this and Escape to Victory, I'm still going to go with Escape to Victory. Is that because I have a bias towards football movies? Absolutely. This also means that Beckham is our worst actor, but now's the moment you've been waiting for. Oscar goes to Eric Cantona. Congrats, Eric. Just please do not give us a speech this time. I love football. But with Cantona the winner, my movie marathon was finally over. <sighs> now that is enough movies for one day. Well, that was fun.